So some time ago, I'm sure most of you might remember when I did my list for the top 20 favorite Thomas & Friends episodes. I thought that set of videos went pretty well, but now with the monstrous reboot coming out, and season 24 finally being a thing in the past, I thought now was the perfect time to make a list and see which episodes are truly the worst of the series. In fact, there were so many to choose from, instead of being a top 20, I now had to make it into a much longer list. With that being said, there's one little thing I do need to point out with this two-parter. Episodes from series 1 to 6 and 13 to 16 will not be counted. Because truthfully, I do not believe that there are any bad episodes in the classical series. And given that the Nitrogen Era is pretty bad as a whole, it has a very unfair advantage compared to the rest. However, episodes that are in 7 to 12 and 17 to 24 will be counted. Mind you, these are all my picks. These are all based off of my opinion and nobody else's. I hope you guys are ready for some random anger as we go over my top 30 worst Thomas and Friends episodes. Number 30. Thomas makes a mistake. Oh boy, what can I say about this other than it's a plotline we've seen again and again and again so many times. Thomas makes a mistake in almost every episode he's in. So why make an episode that already has him making constant mistakes and trying to avoid getting into trouble. And even when the Indian engines try to help Thomas by telling him he needs to own up, he still does whatever the hell he has to do to avoid the problem entirely, thus getting him in more trouble. I think we've all pretty much lost count at how many times Thomas has made a mistake throughout the series. I would say it's at least well over a hundred, maybe even more. This was just a completely stupid idea that didn't really need to exist. Number 29, Emily's Adventure. Emily's characterization throughout the new series bugs the hell out of me. She had these insufferable moments where she felt the need to be a massive bitch to everyone. Why write her this way? She was perfectly fine when she was introduced in Season 7. Her bossiness, lack of patience, and how rude she is to everyone, these are the key things that are very irritating to sit through. Later on in future episodes, it clearly shows that she didn't learn a thing! Plus, how was this exactly an adventure? This was anything but. If this was the writer's way of saying it's her little adventure into asking someone nicely for help, well, that's kind of dumb if you ask me. Again, this is just one of the many episodes that made me really dislike Emily. She does have a few hidden gems here and there, but most, like this one, are exactly why I don't care for her. Number 28, Forever and Ever. Gordon's betrayal in this can basically be summed up in three simple words. Disgraceful. Disgusting. Despicable. For a big engine, he certainly isn't acting very maturely about this whole thing. So Edward and Henry are leaving Tidmouth. Big deal! How many times have they not been there before? And all of a sudden you're going to make a huge deal about it? Crow. Up, Gordon, my god! I guess the only positive thing I can really give this episode was that it kinda was a middle finger to the adult fans, which, to an extent, I think is kinda funny, but even so, that's not even enough to save it. Not to mention one specific part, I felt like I was on a goddamn acid trip. Only a clown would get a kick out of this. Number 27. Mighty Mac. 
Even as a kid, I never cared for Mighty Mac. Sure, design-wise, he may look cool, but personality-wise, the both of them are idiotic. I cannot stand listening to them bicker throughout this whole episode. It's like I'm listening to a copy of Brunswick and Bayswater who were just as annoying! And you really mean to tell me that these two don't know how to work together by this point in their introduction? And you really don't know how to get to a simple little platform? You worked in the shunting yards for... how long? And not for nothing, the piece of advice that Thomas gave you, look at where you want to go, and follow the track that will take you there? You could probably do that in the shunting yard, no? And you can't figure that out now? Wait, what? But the biggest gripe I have with this is how their bickering caused a great big landslide. Here's a question. How the hell are these two even still working? Get these two out of my sight! Number 26. The Magic Lamp. Well, let's start with the elephant in the room, shall we? There was absolutely no point bringing in Proteus. He is one of the most pointless characters to ever exist. The other thing is, this doesn't exactly feel like a Peter Sam story. The way he behaves all throughout this episode doesn't really make all that much sense. This feels like this would have been better suited for someone like Sir Handel. His season 4 personality would have fit a story like this so much better. And once again, we're back to a three-strike deal, which... Ooh, how many times have we seen that plotline already? Not for nothing, but how many times has that incline of theirs broke? Sounds like a piece of crap if you ask me. Just like this complete nonsense of an episode. Number 25. Thomas's Not-So-Lucky Day. By far, the stupidest episode from Season 24. I don't think I've seen anything more ridiculous than this. Did you really feel the need to shoehorn this Friday the 13th bullshit into the series? We already have two lucky episodes. One of them is good, one of them is terrible. Why do we need a third that's twice as bad? Half the shit Thomas even does in this is just stupid! And for the love of God, STOP LISTENING TO LORENZO! HE'S NOT AN EXPERT ON THIS SHIT! At the end of the day, I don't think Thomas is the one with the bad luck. I think we all are when we were cursed with this horrible episode. Number 24. Mountain Marvel. Why are you bringing up Proteus again? He doesn't exist! And even if he did, what can he do that was so special that they just had to make him a freaking statue? To me, Peter Sam does act a bit selfishly, wanting to keep all the glory to himself. You would never see him act this way. Not for nothing, but he has his own delivery to make, and he's too worried about the damn statue. The biggest gripe I have is towards the end, when he tries to pull the churns and the statue. The load just all of a sudden became heavy. You know, he could have done his job and then went back to go and get the damn statue. And then all of a sudden the hill mysteriously got steep and then he backed into a random set of buffers that just so happened to appear after all this time. No, mm mm, no. Let's just drop the whole Proteus nonsense, please. We all know he doesn't exist, right? Right? Number 23. Grudge Match. Ever since the Great Race, Raul didn't look like a very interesting character to begin with. But when this episode came out, I now despise him. This entire time, he's held a grudge against Thomas for beating him in the Great Race, and he's now this desperate to beat him at something? Are you kidding me? I don't even know why Thomas agreed to do all those dumb things with Raul in the first place! 
I will say, towards the end when Raul snaps his chain and dangles off the rails, I really wouldn't have cared if he fell if I'm being completely honest. That would serve him right trying to prove he's the greatest by wasting his and Thomas' time with these stupid games. Number 22, Rocky Rescue. I don't even like the concept of the Sodor Surgeon Rescue Team for one, and this just proved how incompetent they are as a team. Since Season 14, you mean to tell me that these guys really don't know how to work together? I'm not buying it. Not for nothing, but these characters are hardly even around anymore. Belle, Flynn, and Butch are so underused. Captain's a nobody at this point. I'm surprised they're even bothering to keep him around still. Rocky is just here and there. Personally, the only one I really care about on this team is Harold. I could really give a damn about the rest. I mean, if all of them are really worried about who's better at what when there's an emergency to deal with, then this team needs to take a freaking hike. Number 21, The Man in the Hills. This story doesn't even make any sense. How did this man in the hills all of a sudden become such a huge deal to the narrow gauge engines? All it really is is just a silhouette in the rocks. Lame! And what even are these special gifts you're going to give to Mr. Percival? Decorations, flowers, balloons and banners? These are not real presents? But the one thing that I absolutely hate about this is how the engines knew they had all this work to do, and yet they foolishly stayed waiting for Thomas to basically outdo them in giving Mr. Percival the best present. Meanwhile, Thomas is just grabbing people left and right, thinking that they're this imaginary figure when they have all this food to make for the party! Typical Thomas for ya, am I right? This was a dumb idea that once again did not need to exist. Number 20, Topped Off Thomas. Why is this even a thing? Racing and talking to the wind? I think you're ready for the loony shed there, Thomas. The wind doesn't have magical ears where it can actually hear you. Along with the race with Spencer, did the both of them not realize how dangerous that is? Of course not. You two are too busy trying to see who's faster. And this whole chasing a hat thing, once again under the three strike rule, is just dumb. It's just a hat. I'm sure SDH has plenty of them stashed in a closet somewhere. I also feel like it's a bit of an exaggeration to look this fancy to a small T. Give me a break. Either go and get a new hat, or don't go at all. Simple. Number 19. Push me, pull you. Skarlovi has definitely had his fair share of bad episodes, but this one completely tops them all. What we have here is yet another character trying to keep all the fun to themselves, plus it's also a case of trying to prove who's stronger for a small portion. This bickering between Scarloe and Reneus was not needed, and neither was this bullshit tug-of-war game. Especially if Reneus just ends up helping Scarloe later on in the episode. But my biggest problems with this are as follows. First, I'm not buying that the Puppet Show Special was a heavy load. Nothing on those trucks looks even remotely close to being heavy, so Scarloe could have easily stopped. Second, how did Scarloe suddenly lose control again when he met up with Rusty? And what the hell is Rusty's logic when he hears Scarloe calling? He stops in the middle of the damn tracks! And don't you just love how the points were conveniently set towards the pond? The writing and characterization for this episode was garbage. I would say this is probably the worst of Season 12. 
Number 18. Thomas and the Billboard. For Thomas to go through all of this trouble just to keep Diesel from the new photo is completely stupid on his part. And all because he thought it was done on purpose. What he should have done when he saw the first billboard, he could have, oh, I don't know, asked to take a new one and explain what happened? The loads that were even given out. A clown, a brass band, and decorations? Why do you have to go all out for something that's not even that exciting? It's just a freaking billboard. Not for nothing, but why the hell is Diesel even here? I thought there was this big vendetta between the Diesels and Steamies. What, did that concept just get tossed out the window all of a sudden? If there was one word to describe this episode, it would definitely be awful. Number 17, Emily's Best Friend. Ugh, I can't even with this one. Looking for a best friend is apparently more important than doing your own work. That's logical. If anything, this episode reminds me of the Theodore Tugboat episode Best Friends, just altered a lot. Compared to Emily's Best Friend, the Theodore version is a thousand times better. How Emily went about this whole thing was completely unnecessary. Why did she feel the need to have a best friend while doing her work? She never did before. Besides, all of the engines are friends, so... I can buy the whole best friend thing with Thomas and Percy, but Gordon and Rebecca, James and Nia, these guys are all of a sudden best friends? No, uh-uh, no, 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 I'm not buying it! And I don't know about the rest of you, but that fantasy sequence was probably one of the weirdest ones ever. I mean, really. Selfies, throwing snowballs, and kitty rides? Did they really just go down that path? Unbelievable. Number 16. Ding-a-ling. I liked Freddy when he first appeared in Fearless Freddy, although I'm still very unsure how he even got that name in the first place. But when this episode came along, my liking for him diminished drastically. Supposedly, Freddy is the oldest and wisest of the narrow gauge engines. Okay, well if that's true, then you mean to say that he doesn't know what the hell a bicycle bell is, or even where to find one? Then he obviously isn't that wise according to the irritating three strike rule. And you're really that afraid to ask for help just because James told you off? I think Freddy's pride is what killed him here. Plus, in terms of voice, how did you go from this deep and gruff voice to this weirdly southern sounding voice. Fearless Freddy is back. Of course I know where to find a bicycle bell. What exactly was the point of that? If you're gonna give these characters distinct voices, just stick with what you have. Bottom line, all I have to say about this episode is, once again, another dumb one. <laughs> 